Hey, so today I'm going to show you how to get this started with Windows Subsystem for Linux. Let's get started. So the first thing we'll need to do here is actually install WSL. So in order to install it, you'll open PowerShell and you actually need to open that as administrator. And once that's opened as administrator, you do WSL dash dash install. And for me, I already have it installed, so I'm going to cancel that installation. But you'll go through and install it. It does pretty much everything automatically, and then you'll need to reboot your computer. And once that is done, you can then search in here for Ubuntu. It'll actually show up as an app. And when you open that, it will open a console, which will then open into your WSL. So this is your Linux environment with all your separate file system and everything. So the first thing that I'm going to do is do a sudo apt update. And yours might look a little different here since mine is mostly updated. So there probably won't be anything to actually update but this is important to run. And the next one you run is sudo apt upgrade dash y. And again, mine has no updates. Yours probably will. This might take a few minutes. The next thing I'm gonna do is do sudo apt install thunar. Thunar is just a, a file management system. And I'm, I'm going to use this to kind of demo some features. So you can see mine is already installed, so it didn't have to do anything. Yours will have to go and install it. And then I'm also going to do sudo apt install xfce4. And xfce4 is the actual desktop environment that we're going to be using in this demo. And you can see mine is already installed. Yours will have to go through an installation step here. So now one thing we're going to have to do is edit some of the settings for WSL. So here you can do WSL settings. And we want to go to optional features. And here for enable GUI applications, you want this to be off. So currently right now there are some built in features into WSL for actually uh, forwarding GUI applications from WSL to Windows. But as far as I'm aware right now, there's no way to get that full desktop environment sent over the X11 forwarding. And in fact, I believe this uses Wayland, not X11. Not all applications support Wayland currently. So we're going to use X11 forwarding. So we can close out of this. And once, once you've turned the, if this was on and you turn it off, you'll need to restart WSL. So you can just do WSL dash dash shut down and that will shut down WSL. And then you can reopen that. And we're back. So the next thing is we need a program that can actually display the Linux windows when they get forwarded to windows. So for that, we're going to install the VCX serve, which is a Windows X server. And I'll put this link in the description because when I tried to install VCX serve from the VCX serve website, the version they had on the website was actually older than this version, and I ran into some issues. So you want to make sure you're getting the newest version of VCX serve, which for me was version 64.1.20.14.0. And mine is already installed, but you'll go ahead and run through that installer, just accepting all the defaults. And once that's installed, you should be able to run a program called xlaunch. So for xlaunch, we're basically creating a window that Linux will use to forward all the applications to. So we can either do one large window, you can do full screen, if you want kind of more of an immersive experience. Uh, for this uh, demo, I'm just going to do one large window so we can still see our other windows. And you'll say the display number is zero. Start no client. And you want to make sure to check disable access control or else Linux won't 
have the correct permissions to forward those programs to our uh, X11 window. Finish, and you can see it'll open this big window. Make this a little bit smaller. So the one last thing we need to do is we need to tell this WSL instance where to forward this display to. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to our PowerShell window and tap IP config. And this is going to print out a bunch of info about our network. What we're looking for is this Ethernet adapter WSL Hyper-V firewall, specifically this one. Uh, for some of you, this one might show up. Uh, you don't want that one. You, you want this one here, the Hyper-V firewall. And you're looking for this IPv4 address. So this is basically Windows talks to the WSL over this uh, IP address, kind of like it's talking to another computer on the network. So then what we do is we say export display equals 172.31.128.1. And this number might be different for you. I'm just copying down this number right here. It will be different for you most likely. And then say colon zero. So now if we run start xfce4, you will see that in this little window over here, it's launched our Linux desktop environment. Sweet. And you can move it around, you can make it bigger if you want. Um, and like I said, you can also do full screen. And since this is WSL is a super bare bones, there's not a ton of stuff installed on it. Uh, not a lot of stuff on here is going to work out of the box. So for instance, if we hit the web browser, it's not going to work because we don't have a web browser installed. You can see, couldn't find a suitable web browser. But I installed Thunar. And I believe Thunar actually does come installed with XFCE, but I just installed it manually just to be sure. So if we click the folder and open folder, you can see that it opens Thunar, but it's actually opened in this desktop environment, just like if you were kind of uh, actually had this Linux machine running somewhere. And so you can do this with any program that you install on this WSL environment. That is a GUI program. You can then run it within here. That's pretty awesome. I haven't done a ton of I have not done a ton of testing with this, um, but it seems to work for basic stuff like this. If you start getting into more advanced stuff, uh, like playing videos or playing games, it, it might get a little wonky. I'm not sure. I haven't fully tested that out. Um, but for basic stuff like this, it seems to work and it seems to work really well. Um, you know, I'm not sure how useful it actually is. I just think it's kind of cool. Uh, so if you guys want to play around with it, um, you know, let, let me know if you get anything cool going because I'd love to see it. And I hope this helps some of you uh, do some cool stuff.